and welcome to A Beginner's Guide to Neural Mechanisms. My name is Mishwita Chiramuta and I'm a philosopher at the University of Edinburgh. I'm going to be talking to you about explanation in neuroscience. So there are lots of um, topics that we could cover in a lecture like this, but this is what we'll be looking at today. The question of what explanations in neuroscience are, then I'm going to be focusing in the second part on mechanistic explanation, giving you some background, both contemporary and historical on that. Then I'm going to be focusing on computational models in neuroscience, and then finally talking about the connection between explanation and simplification. So what is explanation in neuroscience? Well, really, we need to think about what explanation is in science more generally. There are all kinds of things that we ask for scientists to explain about the natural world. But broadly, we're interested in the question of why things happen and how things happen. So if you take the example of the seasons changing throughout the year, the question, why does this happen, is explained by scientists by referring to the tilt of the Earth's, Earth's axis as it rotates around the sun. But also you can ask the question, well, how does it happen? How did it happen in the past that the Earth's axis became tilted? And there's this explanation which goes back into the deep history of the Earth, which talks about a collision between the celestial body that later became the moon and an early form of the planet Earth, which tilted the Earth off its axis. If you're thinking about a explanation in the world around us today in the living world, you could think about the migration of birds and ask, why does this happen? And in this case, when we're talking about living organisms which have adapted um, to their environmental conditions and need to do certain things in order to survive, then in those cases, um, we can answer those why questions by looking at the function or adaptiveness of certain patterns of behavior. So migration um, has the function of helping animals to move to places where food is more available to them as the seasons change. So that answers the question why migration happens. But if you're asking how migration happens or how it happens that a bird starts its migration on a particular day, then um, you need to refer to some of the causal processes that go on within an animal, so how the changing of the seasonal patterns of lightness and darkness affects its hormones, and then the effects that hormonal changes has on physiology and how physiology um, affects behavior. So even for broadly speaking, the same phenomenon, like a bird's migration, you can have different explanatory questions and different answers that you'd be giving. So explanations are important to us on some level because they can satisfy a childlike curiosity that we have about the world. Um, just all those why questions that children like to ask and then you can refer to scientific answers to those um, questions. But also um, explanations have like, real world practical implications. So many explanations allow you to make predictions of things that go on in the natural world. And also um, when you have in particular causal explanations for why things happen, those give you clues about how one might intervene to change um, those causal processes. So there are many explanatory questions that neuroscience um, can pose itself and also try to answer. A question that neuroscientists might ask themselves are, is how are memories formed? Why do some people get dementia and not others? And why um, the frontal cortex is larger in primates than in other animals? So for questions such as um, the one about dementia, knowing an explanation of how some, why some people get dementia and not others would potentially lead to a causal intervention where you could, by finding out what protects some people from dementia, you could try to help people that are susceptible to dementia um, through 
some of that knowledge that's acquired from learning that explanation. So there are both. So again, there are both sort of curiosity driven reasons for seeking explanations and also practical real world issues. And you might also be wondering, why do we why do we do philosophy of science? Why are philosophers looking at the science and talking about explanation? Well, just broadly speaking, one of the things that philosophy is doing is sort of standing back from all of these practical and knowledge generating processes that scientists do and trying to shed light on these in a more sort of general way. So one of the things that philosophers try to do is look for sharper definitions of terms like explanations than ones that by themselves would be in regular use both amongst scientists and in common sense everyday life. Thank you.